सो मिनी गाइड जंग फार्माकोलॉजी चैप्टर नंबर 44 आज हम डिस्कस करेंगे व्हिच इज अबाउट टेट्रासाइक्लिंस माइक्रोलाइज्ड क्लिडोमाइसिन सो इफ यू ग्रुप देम ऑल टुगेदर दैट बेसिकली इज द ग्रुप व्हिच इनहिबिट्स प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस सो ऑल दीस आर प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस इनहिबिटर्स ओके एंड यू नो वी डिवाइड द एंटीबायोटिक्स व्हिच वर्क ऑन द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स इन वेरियस वेज सो फॉर एग्जांपल देयर आर एंटीबायोटिक्स व्हिच इनहिबिट द सेल वॉल सिंथेसिस एंड नाउ दिस ग्रुप व्हिच इनहिबिट्स द प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस सो the antimicrobial drugs which are reviewed in this particular chapter are selectively uh, protein synthesis inhibitors okay for bacteria the mechanism of protein synthesis in microorganisms are not identical obviously different microorganisms ka protein synthesis ka mechanism different hai and it is uh, uh, unka aapas mein bhi different hai but it's not as different as they are different to the human beings if they are compared to the human beings therefore these uh, drugs when taken they particularly go to the microorganisms and try to kill them and human cells are happily healthy okay bacteria have 70s ribosomes whereas humans mammalian cells have 80s ribosomes uh, therefore the drugs that you use are specific for the microorganisms differences exist in ribosomal subunits and in the chemical composition and functional specificities of the components of nucleic acids and proteins so I mean rest assured the point for these lines is the fact that we have altogether a different protein synthesis mechanism as compared to the microorganisms therefore these drugs when they are taken they specifically kill microbial protein synthesis they kill uh, they stop that mechanism but the human mechanism is safe such differences form the basis of the selective toxicity of the drug against only the microorganisms without causing any major effect on the protein synthesis in mammalian cell okay so that's an important point now as you know that ketzung always uh, kind of classify the drugs at the very outset so protein synthesis inhibitors for bacteria can be broad spectrum so broad spectrum are the ones which will cover a broad range of bacteria then there is moderate spectrum they'll be uh, specific but still broader than the narrow spectrum which are very very specific so we'll talk about all three categories one by one uh, broad spectrum moderate spectrum and um, very very narrow spectrum antibiotics so inhibitors of protein um, synthesis bacteria ke liye so some general concepts and then we'll talk about some general concepts of how they act and then we will pick up specific drugs such as tetracyclines and what not so Let's begin our discussion. Drugs that inhibit protein synthesis vary considerably in terms of their chemical structures. Obviously, I mean there will be different types of drugs, and therefore the spectrum of their activity is also different. Chloramphenicol, tetracyclines, amino glycids were the first inhibitors of protein synthesis. So these are like the you know old grandfather drugs for inhibition of protein synthesis. because they had a broad spectrum of antibacterial activity and were not and were thought to have low toxicities they were overused both in the use why and and that's true in fact aaj bhi ho raha hai many ones highly susceptible bacteria species have now become resistant to them because they have been used for such a long time now the bacteria have gone resistant to them okay erythromycin an older macrolide antibiotic has a narrow spectrum of action but continues to be active against several important pathogens than azithromycin clarithromycin semi synthetic macrolides they have some distinctive properties compared with erythromycin as does clindamycin so they are just giving you a flavor of what do we have in this particular group okay then how do these drugs act what is the mechanism of action so most of the antibiotics reviewed in this chapter are bacteriostatic inhibitors so they are bacteriostatic inhibitors of protein synthesis okay at the level of the ribosome now you know as for humans a ribosome is the factory where proteins are synthesized so in bacteria as well if you inhibit at the ribosomal level protein synthesis will be affected with the exception of tetracyclines the binding site now you need to first remember this chart when i talk about tetracycline you should know that we are talking about a broad spectrum antibiotic so if you don't remember this chart please do not proceed with the video because this is the first thing to remember the broad spectrum only two names that you have to remember then the second category um, only three or two names that you have to remember and the third category three names that you have to remember so please remember these names was whenever i take a name now so for example if i'm saying tetracycline you should know we are talking about broad spectrum antibiotic okay the binding sites for these inhibitors are on the 50s ribosomal subunit obviously for the bacteria clomphenicol uh, 
another drug now try to locate where that drug was in this particular cycle again a broad spectrum antibiotic okay so chloramphenicol inhibits transpeptidation that's another step of protein synthesis but uh, at the end of the day chloramphenicol is also inhibiting protein synthesis thus the peptide at the donor site cannot be transferred to the amino acid receptor that's the mechanism of action for chloramphenicol now macrolides dilithromycin clindamycin which are shared which share a common binding site on 50s ribosome obviously of the bacteria they block transpeptidation as well tetracyclines bind to 30s ribosomal subunit and they prevent so here is the, the i mean that's a very important in pharmacology obviously there are things which are very important and you must actually kind of remember them hardcore and this is one of them okay it's streptogramins which are very very uh, narrow spectrum antibiotics uh, something in mechanism of action kya hai? they are bactericidal for most susceptible organisms they bind to the 50s so they are either binding to the 50s most of them or 30s like tetracyclines and uh, uh, they constrict the exit channel on the ribosome through which the nascent polypeptides are extruded so they kind of uh, channel ko constrict kar dete hain amino acid bahar nahi ja sakenge and tRNAs agar bahar nahi ja sakenge not the amino acid the tRNAs if they cannot go out the whole protein synthesis mechanism is disrupted Linozolid is mainly bacteriosteric. The drug binds to uh, 50S ribosome, but the site is different from the ones which was being, uh, you know, bound by the other uh, protein inhibitors. And what it does is it inhibiting initiation by blocking the formation of tRNA, uh, messenger RNA, ternary complex. So all of them are somehow inhibiting protein synthesis various steps. Okay, either they bind to the 50S unit or 30S, but so. All of them are basically acting at the level of the ribosome. Selective toxicity of these protein synthesis inhibitors against microorganisms may be explained by target defenses. Chloramphenicol does not bind to the ATS ribosomal RNA of mammalian cell, although it can inhibit the function of the mitochondrial ribosome, which contains 70S ribosomal RNA. So, tetracycline. So, therefore, chloramphenicol will have appropriate side effects. Abhi hum padhenge inke baare mein. So, if you understand how these drugs are actually acting. then you actually understand how um, their side effects will be there so if you look at this diagram it shows you the 50s subunit of the ribosome and the 30s subunit of the ribosome and there are different steps going on uh, and these are the drug molecules which you are supposed to know so for example this t is representing tetracycline which binds to the 30s subunit and it prevents the binding of incoming charged transfer rna so it interrupts at that particular level and um, and and so on and so forth so you just pick up so chloramphenicol for example c c is for chloramphenicol and chloramphenicol as well as the macrolides the macrolides they are binding to the 50s uh, subunit and they block the transpeptidation uh, step number 2 so that that step is being blocked by these two drugs so the point is that you so that's a good diagram to kind of uh, you know cartoon wise represent this complicated text okay now uh, we have to discuss a few specific things about uh, specific protein synthesis inhibitors so let's first start tetracycline so first thing that you need to remember is the classification obviously they are broad spectrum antibiotics they are bacteriosteric and they only have minor differences in their activities against a specific organism so therefore they are very broad uh, broad spectrum okay inko ye nahi pata chalta ki main is bacteria ko maar raha hu isko nahi maarna isko so they are broad spectrum the kind of kill many of them okay pharmacokinetics oral absorption is variable especially for the older drugs and may be impaired by the food and multi so that's an important point so if you are taking them with calcium iron aluminum type of thing foods which contain these things a lot the absorption of uh, these drugs from the gut will be disturbed tetracyclines have a wide tissue distribution and across the they, they cross the placenta that's an important one all the tetracyclines undergo enterohepatic cycling so in the liver they are metabolized excreted um in 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 the conjugated form which happens in the liver doxycycline is secreted mainly in the feces so obviously if something is being metabolized in the liver it goes down in the bile duct going to the uh, git and excluded out of the body in the form of feces the half lives of doxycycline and minocycline 
these are the categories which you have to remember for tetracyclines are longer than for those of the other tetracyclines tigacycline formulated only for iv use so that's an important one because uh, that's the one which is only iv available no oral dose it is eliminated in bile and has a half life of 30 to 36 hours pretty good so these are the important bits that you have to remember uh, for pharmacokinetics of tetracyclines then the uh, spectrum of their antibacterial activity and the clinical use that's very important tetracyclines are broad spectrum and uh, they have the activity against gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria therefore they are called broad spectrum uh, also active against rickettsii chlamydia mycoplasma and some protozoa however resistance to most tetracycline is widespread because they are very old antibiotics they have been used for i mean ages now so bacteria have evolved themselves to be resistant to many of them and resistance mechanism drug basically how does that happen is the active extrusion of tetracyclines and the formation of ribosomal protection proteins so basically if uh, this is a bacteria and the drug enters so bacteria have now developed a mechanism to expel the drug out of the bacteria so drug cannot work anymore that's one mechanism and the other mechanism is that there are ribosomal protection proteins so the drug cannot go and act on the ribosome okay these mechanisms do not confer resistance to tigacycline in most organisms which with the exception of multi-drug efflux uh, pumps of proteus pseudomonasis species so the point is that tigacycline is, is still relatively a drug to which many of the organisms are sensitive now with this information let's talk about the primary uses of the drug in clinics they are recommended in treatment of infection caused by mycoplasma pneumonia in particularly in adults Lemidia, rickettsia, vibrios, and some spirochetes. And dog Z is currently an alternative to macrolides in the initial treatment of community acquired pneumonia. So that's the primary use, okay? And you see the primary use is not against routine gram positive gram negative. It's a specific organism, mycoplasma, for example, chlamydia, rickettsia, these are all specific microorganisms. Remember this, okay? And the secondary uses include. Uh, tetracyclines are alternative drugs in treatment of syphilis so syphilis is something that you have to definitely remember that these are the drugs alternative uh, treatment for syphilis they are also used in the treatment of respiratory infection caused by susceptible organism for prophylaxis as well uh, for against infection in chronic bronchitis uh, like a superimposed bacterial infections now in the treatment of leptospirosis and acne as well so very common use for these drugs by the way Specific tetracyclines are used in treatment of GI ulcers by Helicobacter pylori um, tetracyclines, okay? And um, remember this point because that is then uh, the topic of question in your exams as well because these are very specific, um, you know, usages. Lyme disease and in meningococcal carrier state. So these are the specific uses of um, tetracyclines, right? Now... Uh, remember we are all talking about tetracyclines all the drugs under the tetracycline the their distribution how they act how they develop resistance okay doxy is also used for prevention of malaria all as well as amoebiasis that's kind of like remembering thing that you have to remember okay tigacycline which is iv formulation uh unique features of this uh, particular drug uh, is that it's a broad spectrum of action that includes organisms resistant to standard tetracycline so if a standard if you get a culture and sensitivity report where many of the tetracyclines you see resistant you may still try tigacycline okay then <clears throat> you obviously have to think about some other resistant organisms such as mrsa um, and vancomycin beta lactamis producing gram negative bacteria so basically tigacycline is your you know um, uh, is, is is the last type of thing that you have to is the last resort type of thing okay when most of the tetracyclines are uh, kind of resistant you can still try tigacycline okay obviously like other drugs they don't come free of uh, side effects so they have side effects which you have to remember gi disturbances uh, and they uh, nausea and diarrhea har student ko pata hota hai pharma mein ke isi se shuru karna ji side effects bataye flani drug ke they always start with nausea diarrhea and all those stuff but this is uh, more than that beyond this there can be post uh, possibility of life threatening enterocolitis so this is something important which you must not forget 
disturbances in the normal flora because you are giving antibiotics so the normal flora of the gi tract will be disturbed um, it can lead to you know uh, super infections with other organisms such as clostridium difficile uh, there can be side effects on bones and teeth fetal exposure particularly to tetracycline as i told you it crosses placenta it may lead to tooth enamel dysplasia and irregularities in the bone growth although usually contraindicated in pregnancy very important and high yield point you don't give tetracyclines in pregnancy um, and sometimes you have to i mean they are abs absolute contradiction in EA. so you have to weigh the you know risk benefit analysis and if the benefits outweigh the risk, you still sometimes have to use it. Treatments of the younger children may cause enamel dysplasia as well. So teeth and bone problems, then liver problem because the drugs are metabolized in the liver. It may lead to sometimes, you know, hepatic diseases such as liver failure, impaired liver function or hepatic necrosis. Kidney, one form of renal tubular acidosis, fan kidney syndrome has been attributed to the use of outdated tetracyclines, expired tetracyclines. Okay, they can be nephrotoxic. Photosensitivity, uh, particularly demiglocycline, may cause enhanced skin sensitivity to ultraviolet rights and uh, air problem, vestibular muscle, dose dependent, reversible, and these are reversible. That's good. Uh, vertigo and dizziness have been reported with doxy and minor. So, as for other drugs, you know, basically, if you divide things into uh, perspective you must know for every drug i mean whatever the drug comes in front of you first thing you need to know what is the drug classification kiss group and fetal tier then what is the pharmacokinetic profile oral layer iv layer and kaise layer then what drug case organisms ke against active hai usme resistance kis tarah se hai clinical uses kya hai or side effects kya hai so these are the four or five headings which you have to uh, ask yourself whenever you are studying a drug okay so let's start the next uh, group of uh, protein synthesis inhibitors that is macrolide so the same formula will also um, be applicable to uh, macrolide the classification and the pharmacokinetic profile these antibiotics and the examples for this particular group are erythromycin azithromycin clarithromycin they are large cyclic lactone ring structures with attached sugars the drugs have good oral bioavailability but azithromycin absorption may be impeded by food isliye bas drugs hoti hain jo aapko pata hai हम पेशेंट्स को कहते हैं कि ईट द ड्रग हैव द ड्रग एटलीस्ट हाफ एन आवर बिफोर यू हैव योर मील सो उसमें ये कंसिडरेशन इंपॉर्टेंट होती है कि अगर किसी ड्रग की एब्जॉर्बशन फूड के साथ डिस्टर्ब हो रही है सो यू टेक इट अलिटल अर्लियर देन यू टेक योर फूड मैक्रोलाइट डिस्ट्रीब्यूट टू मोस्ट ऑफ द बॉडी टिश्यूज जस्ट लाइक टेट्रोसाइक्लिन बट एजीथ्रोमाइसिन इज यूनिक इन दैट द लेवल अचीव द टिश्यूज इन द फाइगोसाइट आर कंसिडरेबली हायर एज दोज कम्पेयर इन द प्लाज्मा सो दे फॉर सम रीजन दे लाइक फाइगोसाइट्स मोर ओके द एलिमिनेशन ऑफ एरिथ्रोमाइसिन वाई आर बिलेरी एक्सप्रेशन एंड क्लैरिथ्रोमाइसिन वाई आर हेपैरिक मेटाबॉलिज्म एंड देन यूरिनरी एक्सप्रेशन सो मेटाबलाइज इन द लिवर एंड देन गोज टू द किडनी Uh, it's fairly rapid half life is pretty uh, short 2 and 6 hours respectively for these two drugs azithromycin is eliminated slowly uh, mainly in the urine as unchanged drug so pretty simple stuff that you need to remember now the antibacterial activity against what bacteria are these drugs active erythromycin has activity against many species of campylobacter chlamydia mycoplasma legionella so remember them gram positive cocci so strap 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 okay and also some gram negative organisms so pretty good drug basically erythromycin the spectra of activity of uh, azithromycin and clarithromycin are similar but they include greater activity against uh, some of the organisms including these ones Azithromycin is also effective in gonorrhea so that's an important point to remember as an alternative to safraxone and also in syphilis as an alternative to penicillin so this drug has activity against gonorrhea resistance to macrolide in gram positive organism involves the e flux pump yani drug ko utha ke bahar phek denge theek hai and also changes in the ribosomal binding site important point so the drug resistance is very routinely reported cross resistance between individual macrolides is complete in the case of methylase producing microbial strains there is partial cross resistance with other drugs that bind to the same ribosomal site so if you're taking one drug the other one is not working that's called the cross resistance okay resistance in enterobacteriaceae is uh, the result of formation of drug metabolizing esterases so there are different mechanisms which these little bugs have identified to make the drugs 
you know non-functional and this is what we call development of resistance so if you know the antibacterial activity of these drugs you kind of know their clinical uses so now you know they can be used against all these organisms okay it's a big long list that's why they are very broad spectrum azithromycin has so this was all about erythromycin pretty long list then azithromycin almost similar profile just I mean, I have told you, they specifically, um, you know, more activity against these organisms. Then we have clarithromycin has almost the same spectrum as that of erythromycin as well, and the drug is also used as you know prophylactic agent for the treatment of uh, Mycobacterium avium complex, as well as one of the drug to be included in the H pylori eradication regime. Then there is a, a narrow spectrum macrolide antibiotic that inhibits protein synthesis and is actively, um, particularly against gram positive aerobes and anaerobes, which is given orally. And um, Clostridium difficile colitis calia, particularly, it has been uh, very, very effective. Uh, and um, the name of the drug is Phydoxomycin. Oh my god, so erythromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin were easy. Uh, that's a difficult name to remember. Is ko paanj dafa bolen zara ek saath, tongue twister. Jaysa tongue twisters hote na, ye bhi hai. Ek saath paanj dafa iska naam leke dikha hai mujhe zara. Right? Now, the toxicity of this group is adverse effect include, especially with erythromycin, include GI irritation, the same as that of tetracyclines, uh, because it stimulates the motilin receptors. It also causes skin rashes, eosinophilia, hypersensitivity-based acute uh, hepatitis, so liver problem, GI problems. Erythromycin also inhibits several forms of uh, hepatic cytochrome P450 enzyme mechanisms, and therefore, it can increase uh, plasma levels of many drugs, including anticoagulants. The very important interaction for your exams because whenever a drug is interacting with metabolism of other drug, that's a very important topic. So, since it is interfering with the cytochrome P450 mechanism, many drugs are not appropriately metabolized, and they their levels go up. And uh, therefore, if the patient is taking anticoagulants and also taking erythromycin, you need to be aware of uh, that interaction. Then another drug that we have to discuss is telithromycin. It's a ketolide structurally. You don't have to remember that related to macrolide. That's an important point. The drug has the same mechanism of action as that of erythromycin and a similar spectrum of antimicrobial activity. However, some macrolide resistant uh, strains are susceptible to telithromycin. So it's a better drug, particularly in case of resistance. The drug can be used in community acquired pneumonia, including infections caused by multi drug resistant organisms. So that's a good tool for resistant stuff, okay? The adverse effect of telithromycin include hepatic dysfunction and prolongation of the QT interval, and that's pretty, I mean, serious stuff, okay? If the heart uh, depolarization waves, so uh, be aware. There are some drugs which are very routinely used, uh, can cause long QT interval, okay? Right. The drug is also an inhibitor of the CYP3A4 drug metabolism system. So remember, it can interact. All those drugs which are metabolized by this particular metabolic metabolism symptom system are then going to be affected. So uh, just like erythromycin, which uh, affected cytochrome P450 system and increased level of some of the drugs. Okay. Now, uh, Kalinda. Now, Kalinda inhibits bacterial protein synthesis by a mechanism similar to that of macrolide, just as we have seen Although it is not chemically related, but the mechanisms are somehow similar. Or resistance uh, hey, by the methylation of the binding site on the 50S, because that's the this is where it binds. So the bacteria becomes smart and protect the binding site. Okay. Gram-negative aerobes are intrinsically resistant because poor penetration of the clindamycin through the outer membrane. So gram-negative, I uh, don't commonly use it. Okay. Cross-resistance between clinda and macrolide is common. So use either one of them. Good tissue penetration, clindamycin undergoes hepatic metabolism and both intact drugs and metabolites are then excreted by uh, liver as well as by kidneys. And their clinical uses include... Uh, uh, severe infections caused by certain anaerobes such as bacteroids. Aerobes me to ab ye use nahi kar rahe. Aapko bata diya. It does not penetrate well in them. Clindamycin has been also used as a backup resistant gram-positive cocci. So that's an important point. Okay. The drug also is active against pneumocystis gyrobici and uh, is used in combination with um, other, uh, you know, uh, drugs such as for AIDS-related toxoplasmosis. So it, it has pretty. Uh, you know, a specialized kind of a spectrum. 
The toxicity of clindamycin include GI irritation, skin rashes, neutropenia, hepatic. So most of them are pretty common. GI disturbances, uh, rashes, eosinophilia, and liver problems. Okay, and also because they disturb the normal flora of the GI tract, pseudomembranous colitis because of uh, C. difficile in the gut is also not uncommon. Okay, then streptogramins. Uh, these are now, streptogramins, again, if you go back to the first chart that we discussed, uh, the initial one, they are very narrow spectrum. So, now the drugs that we are going to discuss now are um, narrow spectrum, okay? They have a specific short-term type of uh, targets. Um, that's a drug which is a combination of two streptogramins, is bactericidal, name of the drug is quinopristine uh, and dalfopristine combination. Uh, it has a duration of antibacterial activity longer than the half-lives of two compounds. So, the, both of them together are kind of more surviving in the body. Antibacterial activity includes, this is important, against MRSA, so resistant organism, so methicillin-resistant, Staph aureus, and vancomycin-resistant. So, that's a very important drug because it's used against MRSA as well as VRSA. And also, again, resistant um, E. facium as well as Enterococcus fiscalis. It is the drug which is being used for nasty organisms, okay? So, those organisms which are resistant to a lot of things can then be considered to be treated by streptogramins. Administered IV, the combination product may cause pain as well as arthralgia myalgia syndrome. And streptogramins are a potent inhibitor of this metabolic system and therefore it increases the plasma levels of many drugs. And these are the names of the drugs. So whenever you are using warfarin, for example, or non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, you even cyclosporins and diazepam, they are all metabolized by uh, CYP3A4 system. And uh, because streptogramins inhibit this system, then you need to consider that levels of these drugs may go up in the body and you need to adjust the doses. The same system was also being inhibited by um, this particular drug as well, telithromycin. Okay. Now, the next one is uh, again a very old drug in uh, clinical practice called chloramphenicol. It has a simple and distinctive structure, has no other antimicrobial uh, have been discovered in this chemical class. That's the only one. It is effective orally as well as parenterally, IV behave, oral behave, chloramphenicol undergoes enterohepatic cycling and a small fraction of dose is excreted also in the urine. Okay. Um, hepatic is key metabolism here. Antimicrobial activity is kikya hai, is a very wide spectrum and one of the oldest drugs, usually bacteriostatic. Some strains of Haemophilus influenza, meningitis, bacteroids are highly susceptible, so it's still used. It is not active, however, against chlamydia. C. chlorum phenicol here or C. chlamydia here, but active is against. Resistance to chlorum phenicol has been reported, and that is plasmid mediated and occurred through the formation of acetyl transfer that inactivate the drug. So bacteria are, are smart, they have mechanisms to make a drug inactive. Because of its toxicity, chloramphenicol has, a ve has very few uses as a systemic drug because it's pretty toxic drug, okay? Orally say it. It is backup for the drug for severe infections caused by salmonella and uh, uh, it's also sometimes used for rickets cell disease as well as uh, bacteroids fragilis. So remember the spectrum, guys. This is important. I know it's a difficult and boring task, but you have to. And toxicity profile, again, GI disturbance, bone marrow disturbances, that's important. Inhibition of red cell maturation, so that's an important one. Can cause aplastic anemia, it's a rare but serious complication. And the gray baby syndrome in infants and is characterized by decreased red blood cell, cyanosis, and cardiovascular collapse. Neonates, especially premature neonates, are deficient in hepatic gluconal transferase, so the drug cannot be metabolized appropriately, and therefore the side effects are very, very huge. Drug interactions, it inhibit hepatic drug metabolizing systems and therefore it increase the half-life for many drugs including phenytoin, tolbutamide, warfarin. Okay, so you have to adjust the doses for these drugs. Oxazolidinones, <laughs> okay, the first of a novel class in, uh, antibiotic, uh, lanizolid is a super antibiotic it's active against many drug resistant gram positive coca, including MRSA as well as uh, vancomycin resistant organisms. The drug is also active against uh, monocytogenes and corny bacteria. Uh, this drug binds to a unique site 
on 23 ribosomal RNA of the 20 of the 50 so that's a site which is not shared by any other antibacterial and resistance involves this can be a resistance report or a it involves a decreased affinity for uh, of this binding to the binding site the bacteria is becoming sharper and smarter Linozolid is available in both oral as well as parenteral formulation and should be reserved for the treatment of infection caused by multi-drug resistance. So if there is multi-drug resistant case, then think of linozolid. Routine is use karenge, then the drug uh, resistance will develop very, very quickly. Thro I mean, imagine of a day when the bacteria you are dealing with is resistant to all the antibiotics that you have. My God, it's a nightmare. So that day you will not be able to kill this bacteria. Therefore, we have to use antibiotics with great care. Okay, thrombocytopenia, neutropenia, these are common side effects, uh, particularly in immunocompromised patients such as HIV patient or pregnant or somebody on steroids. Linozolid has been implicated in the serotonin synthesis syndrome, uh, where used in patients taking SSRIs. So interactions, guys, important. Tadizolid is a product for tadizolid phosphate, a next generation uh, drug in this particular category with high potency against gram positive bacteria. So, new drugs they are trying and uh, throwing into the clinical practice. Okay, so this is a very important chapter, and uh, th that's all about this particular video. In the next video, we'll uh, hit another group of drugs, which is probably, let me see which one is that. Oh, it's aminoglycosides and spectinomycin. So, see you till then. If you like this video, please share it. Subscribe to the channel. Bell icon hit My name is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lecture.